hymns and songs, number 47. Gospel hymns and songs, number 47. Just as God who reigns on high speak to men in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today. And my brother, this is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. If you are in the Savior's hands, you must do as he commands, for there is no other gospel way. Never put the message by, never stop to reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. If for mansions prayer you sigh, in that land beyond the sky, after time with you has passed away, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty both we cry, just obey. Just obey, just obey. It's the way, God's way. When his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey.
just ten of sin, driving out the fools who bring thy heart within. Go and tell the story, tell it far and wide, how the Lord of glory for the sinner died. And the souls that hear it and in faith believes straight away he the cleansing from the Lord receives. Go and tell the story of his heart to save of the sinful legion sunk beneath the grave. Of his love so true, of the wondrous things the Lord hath done for you. Go and tell the story, tell it far and wide, how the Lord of glory for the sinner died, and the soul that he Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only no scrip, no bread, 
no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works to show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced, and pleased Herod, and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth, and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry. Yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse, and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done, and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship, privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and outwent them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him, and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about, and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread, and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five, and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks, by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven, and blessed, and brake the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, and to go to the other side before, unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out, for they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. 
and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered, into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets, and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
convictions, evidence of faithfulness, abide in love and grace. It is in this lonely midnight that I found my greatest treasure, the assurance of your love and beats me in this Praise the Lord. If but know your state, I said, Praise the Lord. Freedom. Total freedom. For your spirit. For your soul. For your body. For your family. It's coming your way tonight. Father, we thank you for this hour, the hour of total freedom, salvation, healing, deliverance. Lord, I pray that tonight you open the windows of heaven, pour down miracles upon everyone in Jesus' name. No one will go back home empty-handed. Tonight, night of miracle, night of power, night of salvation, night of healing, night of deliverance, night of the anointing that breaks every you. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight is the beginning of the sixth day crusade that we're having here at the bottom at the alpha location and it goes to all parts of the world while the message is going on the touch of the lord will come to your life while the prayer is going on every miracle you desire every healing you desire every deliverance you want will be granted unto you in jesus name Tonight, I'm going to start with a story in the Bible. Understand that the Bible is the word of God. And God resides in the word. And the word that comes from God will not go back to him empty-handed. It will definitely accomplish that, that the Heavenly Father has ordained in your life. In my life. It will be done. The story is in Acts chapter 8. And it's from verse 5. Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 8. Reading from verse 5. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. In verse 6, it says, And the people with one accord, all united, all in agreement, the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. The miracles which he did, you will hear. You will see. You see it in your life. You see it in your family. This is the day that God will do that again, hearing and seeing the miracles in the plural the miracles plenty the miracles for everyone which he did verse 7 that tells us for unclean spirits 
crying with loud voice came out of many any bad spirit unclean spirit devilish spirit tormenting anyone tonight you'll come out and those who are taken with pulses they were paralyzed and that were lame were healed tonight is the night of your healing and they were told in verse 8, And there was great joy in that city. Great joy. Joy because of salvation. Joy because of healing. Joy because of deliverance. Joy because of the miracle coming from God unto you. And joy because every prayer we pray on these grounds will be answered. Look at uh, chapter 15, uh, verse 3. It says, I'm being brought on their way by the church, the pastor of Phenicium and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. The Lord will bring joy in your life today. Joy in your heart today. And the joy of a breakthrough in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm speaking to you on this subject of unprecedented miracles with great joy through faith. It comes through faith as we believe in the Lord. I will expect from the Lord as we know that the Lord who has not changed the same yesterday and today and forever. He'll be going around. He'll get to your place right there. And the Lord will touch you and transform you. And then through your connection of faith, there'll be great joy because of unprecedented miracles in your life in Jesus' name unprecedented something that never happened before what your eyes had never seen what your ears have never heard what your heart has never felt the great miracle power and the great miracle performance of the almighty in your life unprecedented miracles unprecedented salvation unprecedented healing unprecedented deliverance unprecedented freedom with great joy through faith in the Lord. Three things we're looking at in this story. Number one, the message of Christ to the whole city. Philip came to the city of Samaria. As I come to this city today, bringing the same message, exalting the same Christ, Talking about the same most high God and moved and inspired, energized, anointed by the same Holy Spirit, expecting that the same thing that was done in the city of Samaria will be done in our city here tonight. <laughs> Number two, the miracle of cure for wholehearted citizens, the people that come. And they say, with all my heart and with all my soul, I have come. And you don't leave anything behind. It's not just your body there. Your body is here. Your mind is here. Your soul is here. Your spirit is here. The totality of yourself, everything here, there will be miracle of cure for the whole-hearted citizens. The citizens of that nation and the citizens of that city as Philip came he brought miracle as Philip came he brought power as Philip came he brought freedom to the people I come to you today anywhere you are you are here at the Alpha location you are over there in your house in an hotel room or in a church building, anywhere you are, outside or inside, in any country, in any continent, power is coming your way tonight. Then, number three, the manifestation. Somebody shout, 
manifestation. The power of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, and impossibilities that will become possible, there will be manifestation in your life tonight in Jesus' name. The manifestation of confession. What you confess with your mouth, I am healed, it will be manifested. I am saved, it will be manifested. I am free, it will be manifested. What you confess with your mouth, what you declare with your mouth, according to the promise of God, according to the power of God that cannot fail today, in this very place, there will be the manifestation according to your confession with wholesome conversion. Wholesome conversion. Total conversion. Thorough conversion. A converted heart. A converted life. A converted soul. A converted spirit. A converted personality. The Lord by his power. And the Lord because of the finished work that he did on the cross of Calvary already. And that miracle of conversion, of total transformation is waiting for you. It will come tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the message. Number two is the miracle. And number three, the manifestation. You have all those three. You sink them in. Manifestation will come in your life. Number one now is the message of Christ for the whole city. The message of Christ for the whole city. Let's come back to Acts chapter 8 and I'm looking at verse 5. If you don't have the Bible there, don't worry, I'll read it to you now. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. He, Philip, a child of God, not only that, a man of God, not only that, one that had the Spirit of God upon his life. You know, it's not the stature of Philip. It's not the knowledge of Philip. It is not any kind of, uh, you can talk about the qualities of Philip. It's the Spirit of God in him. And anywhere that Spirit goes with the man, power will be manifested and so as i come to you tonight i come i come to you in the name of the lord i come to you in the power of the holy ghost i come to you in the anointing that breaks every yoke and tonight any problem in your life every chain every shackle everything that ties you everything will be broken in jesus name but you know, he did something. He preached Christ unto them. And that's what we're doing now. He preached Christ unto them. As I come to you, I bring the message of Christ. That he is Savior. I bring the message of Christ. That he is the one that died for you. He died on the cross of Calvary for you. He knew you. Before you were born, he knew where you will be born. And he knows you today. And he's saying, there is a message coming from heaven. And it is coming to you directly. The message is because Jesus born. Your punishment. Jesus born. The consequence of your crime. Jesus bore the condemnation you should have had. It says because of that, all you have to do now is come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As you come tonight to Christ, as you believe in Christ tonight, as you look at Calvary where Christ died for you and it became the final, the total sacrifice for your sin. And you say, Lord, I come and I believe all your sins will be forgiven. Amen. Not only that, you know, there is forgiveness. There is freedom. Let me explain to you. If somebody has forgiveness 
and it doesn't have freedom, the nature of sin will still pull him down. He'll still keep on committing sin. And he'll be coming and coming and coming. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But Christ did not only come to give you forgiveness. He came to give you freedom. To set you free. And the power of sin will be broken in your life. And you'll be saying, I couldn't help it. I did that. I couldn't help it. I went that way. I couldn't help it. I told that lie. I couldn't help it. I became a drunkard. I couldn't help it. I became a smoker. I couldn't help it. I was into fornication. I couldn't help it. Adultery was the problem. I couldn't help it. Stealing was the problem. I couldn't help it. And if you come to God and say, forgive me, that is one part. The second part that sets you free. And it says, neither do I condemn you. I forgive you. But now, beyond the forgiveness, go and sin no more. The power to live in freedom. Freedom from all the chains of sin that bound you before. That power the Lord will give unto you. You will say, I was a bad character, a bad person, a bad personality, but he has forgiven me. That means the judgment, the punishment of what I was before, he has taken that away. There is no condemnation now to them that walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And now he gives you freedom and he says, you shall know the truth. The truth that Christ is Savior. The truth that Christ is the one that changes us and converts us. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. It changes your personality. It changes your person. It changes what you have been before. And he said, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. He preached Christ unto them. Christ as their Savior. Christ as the one that forgives them. Christ as the one that sets them free. Look at verse 6 there. It says in verse 6, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Understand? All those people, some of them were religious they had their religious ideas in the past before philip came they had their religious traditions before philip came they had their religious dogma before uh, philip came but the moment they listen they said light and darkness will not go together they said oil and water will not mix and because of that all the old ideas, all the old tradition, all the old dogma, they pushed all that aside. And what Philip now spoke concerning Jesus Christ, they accepted the two. And because they accepted that truth that Philip now brought, seeing and hearing the miracles which he did, salvation came to them. Like tonight, salvation has come to you. New life has come to you. And the power to live in newness of life has come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. Philip did not tell stories of tradition and stories of Mr. So-and-so, Madam So-and-so. He took the scriptures, he explained the scriptures, he applied the scriptures to them, and he made them to know that everything that Christ did on the cross of Calvary, he did it for them. He did it for each of them. And because of that, 
they personalized the word that Philip spoke unto them. Not just that Christ is the savior of the world, Christ is my savior. Not just that Christ died for the world, Christ died for me. Not just that Christ will forgive every sin, everyone over there has committed, but Christ will forgive every sin I had committed. And the moment you take that personally tonight, he died on the cross, he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You personalize that. It was for you he died. It was for you he shed his blood. It was for you he provided salvation. When you accept that personally, something good is going to happen to you. Look at Acts chapter 17. And I'm reading here from Bastachi. Acts chapter 17. Reading from Bastachi. And the times of this ignorance, God winged at. Everyone has been ignorant. Ignorant of the sins they were committing. They called good evil. They called evil good. They called the message of heaven an ordinary message. But now, all those times of ignorance that they acted and they spoke and they did things they shouldn't have done god said if you come today if you repent today if you turn around today i will forgive and forget the past i will also set you free and so all this time of ignorance god win that but now Commanded all men everywhere to repent. See what God has now commanded. He says, but now. He's talking to you. He said, all that time of ignorance, sinning, doing evil, committing sin, and not thinking of the consequence. Earthly consequence eternal consequence of the sins you are committing he says now he commanded all men everyone every man every woman every boy and every girl every person on earth it comes to you and he says as you are here the same message that was preached to that city and to every citizen in that city that message is coming to you now they accepted you will accept i said they accepted you will accept they repented you will repent they turned from their evil ways they said total complete Absolute bye-bye to all the sins of the past. And as you come today, like they came up, and you say bye-bye, total bye-bye, final bye-bye, complete bye-bye to all the sins of the past. And you repent as he has commanded all men everywhere to repent, favor will come to you mercy will come to you and the joy of salvation will come to you in Jesus name the Lord says a day of judgment is coming and the only people that will escape the judgment fiery judgment tormenting judgment unbearable judgment that will escape the judgment of God are the people that listen to God as he has commanded all men everywhere to repent look at verse 31 in verse 31 because 
It says, repent now. Because, it says, turn around now. Because, abandon your sin. Abandon your evil. Abandon your idolatry. Because, abide in, uh, abandon the violence in your hand. Because, abandon your hypocrisy because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world he will judge every man every woman he will judge every boy every girl he will judge every secret of man every idle word every idle action every idol behavior he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead and as the lord is calling you today and he's saying judgment day is coming but today is the day of salvation the day of repentance and the day of freedom as you take the freedom tonight judgment will pass you by i said as you take jesus tonight your savior your lord your redeemer the one who died for you and the one that said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you accept that tonight, believe that tonight, embrace that tonight, and look the direction of Christ by faith, saying, He is my Savior. Your salvation tonight will be registered in heaven. Where are you? I said, where are you? Your salvation tonight? My salvation tonight? I can't hear you. My salvation tonight will be registered in heaven. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It will give you rest. Luke chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 32. Luke Chapter 5, verse 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's the word of Christ. There are some people that have not come to Christ. They will not come to Christ. They say I'm good. They say I'm righteous. They say I'm pure. They say I'm a church goer. They say I've been baptized in water as an infant. They say, I take Holy Communion. They say, I am, I am, I am. They have all things. They don't have Christ. It says, all those people who are sure of themselves and will not come, I came not to call the self-righteous, but I came to call sinners to repentance. As you accept the message that the Lord is giving you tonight. And you say, yes, Lord, I know I am the guilty one. I know I am the sinner. And I come pleading that the Lord will forgive me. And the Lord will set me free. And the Lord will grant me total salvation. He will answer your prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Let's come back now to Acts chapter 8 from verse 6 acts chapter 8 from verse 6 the miracle the miracle of kill for wholehearted citizens the miracle of kill thank god that power to heal is still here today the power to heal you the power to deliver you and the power to break every yoke in your life Tonight, the power is here. And that power will be sent over there to you. Every ache, every pain, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every affliction, every attack, 
every yoke everything is broken tonight in jesus name and look at acts chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 6 it says and the people with one accord gave heed to those things with Philip spake, hearing and seeing the heart of the power of christ that christ is able able to forgive able to destroy that sin that also terminates your life able to take that incurable disease away from your life they heard that hearing 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 they paid attention and everything they heard christ healed the sick christ delivered the afflicted and christ broke every yoke they applied to themselves if Christ did that for them at that time, he will do it for me. He will do it for me. And every testimony you have heard as this global crusade has been going on, we've seen the blind healed, we've seen the deaf and dumb receiving their hearing and receiving the ability to speak was we'll seen the lame walking was we'll seen short leg growing out was we'll seen broken bones mended and joined together was we'll seen kidney problems totally solved and was we'll seen even the dead rising they heard they accepted they embraced and they said what God has done for other people, He will do for me. And they got it. And as I say the same thing. And you say, what the Lord has done for other people, He will do for me, He will do for you. Yeah. I said, It will do for you. Yeah. When will the Lord do that for you? the moment you accept because God is no respecter of persons he loves you as much as he loved them all those people he healed all those people he delivered he manifested mercy unto them love unto them and he broke every yoke in their lives and he loves you as much as he loved them and they had that and they embraced that and they accepted that hearing and seeing have you noticed those two words those who heard also saw those who kept on hearing they also kept on seeing what you see and you transfer to your life you see, they got saved. You transfer that to your life. I hear, I see. They got healed. You transfer that to your life. I hear, I see. They got delivered. You transfer that to your life. I hear, I see. Every good thing you have heard in the message of the power of Christ to break every yoke, to destroy the works of the devil every good thing you have heard will be transferred into your life i hear i see i've heard i will see i've known about it i will see power will come to you healing will come to you deliverance will come to you hearing and seeing the miracles which he did those miracles were done and in your life tonight, miracles will take place. Healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Look at that at verse 7. In verse 7, he tells all the kinds of miracles that actually happened then. And the kinds of miracles that will happen now at this time for unclean spirits unclean spirits 
crying with loud voice came out of many the evil spirits and evil power that cause disease in your life that spirit at a command at the name of Jesus will come out tonight and that were possessed with them and many taken with pulses weakness of the bone weakness in their joints pain in their joints pain all over the body inability to stand up inability to walk inability to do what they ought to do and everything in their bodies paralyzed impotent not working power will surge into you tonight in jesus name pain in the head will go liver problem will be solved cancer will vanish away Arthritis will vanish away. Tuberculosis will be driven away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. The moment you hear the name of Jesus, that manifestation will come. All that were taken with pulses and that were lame, that were lame, that were lame, they were healed what is that going to happen tonight it will happen in your life happen in your body the spinal cord that have been damaged new life will come to that spinal cord and everything you've been carrying about or they have to carry you like a baby and put you down gently tonight as I proclaim the name of Jesus upon you, power will come upon your body in Jesus' name. You will rise up and you will walk. Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 16. Acts, chapter 5, verse 16. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, carrying sick folks, pushing sick folks, lifting them up because those people were helpless, bringing sick folks, and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone and they were healed everyone and they were healed everyone say me too say it aloud me too everyone it will come to your turn and tonight is that night the night of power the night of healing the night of deliverance that everyone from the left to the right to the center to the back anywhere you are they were healed everyone how because of the name of Jesus and that name is still as powerful today as it ever was they were healed everyone whatever internal problem external problem eyes problem ears problem liver problem kidney problem they were healed everyone and whatever your problem or challenge may be tonight we will be healed everyone in jesus name they were healed the condition they brought in to the place that condition changed tonight your condition will change. Condition of paralysis will change. Condition.
Acts chapter 14 verse 7 and there they preached the gospel and there they preached the gospel they preached the good news good news for the sinner forgiveness and freedom are available good news for the sick healing is available good news for the oppressed deliverance is available good news for the needy provision is available good news the gospel there they preached the gospel good news has come to you and that good news will be powerfully effected in your life tonight in jesus name and look at this look at verse h it says in verse h and there such a certain man at lystra impotent in his speech being a cripple from his mother's womb who never who never who never had watched there was one of the people there hearing the word of god like you are there tonight and the lord is going to touch your life what are you i said the lord is going to touch your life and then it says this man had never walked he was born a cripple a cripple from his mother's womb never had walked what you were never able to do before tonight miracle will come to you you will rise up and do that incredible impossible sin even tonight in jesus name look at verse 9 in verse 9 the same heard that man the same heard he didn't say i'm a cripple what the use of hearing the word of god the same impotent man heard you won't say i'm blind what the use of hearing what you hear will open your blind eyes and the same man had paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed paul looked at him he didn't shake him he didn't touch him he didn't push him down he didn't put oil on his forehead he didn't pour holy water on him he looked at him and he saw he could see from his attention he could see from the way he was looking at paul this man had faith to be healed the way i see you there tonight i know you have faith to be healed the way i see you there tonight you're saying immediately they finish and then they make the altar call i have faith tonight it will forgive my sin i have faith to be saved manifestation will come in your life manifestation manifestation performance miracle will come in your life in jesus name he had faith to be healed look at verse 10 in verse 10 he said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leads and walk and he leads and walk everybody could see that they heard they saw the same thing tonight everything you are hearing all the testimony i'm sharing with you all the testimonies you have heard you have heard now it's your turn to see and it's your time to see as we tell the miracles and the testimonies of other places they will carry your testimonies to other places what you have heard you have seen they also will hear and they will see your right, eyes up you will see you will experience power will change and shake everything shakeable out of your life in jesus name number one is the message number two is the miracle number three is the manifestation somebody shout manifestation the manifestation of confession with wholesome conversion wholesome conversion 
if we come back to chapter 8 of Acts, verse 8, and there was great joy in that city. Everywhere they came from, they came from different parts of the city. And a lame man came from that area, a blind man came from that area, an incredible man came from that area, and a bleeding a woman came from that area. They came from different places with different challenges, and all the various parts of the city they came from, uh, there was great joy. And this one from this area is saying, My blind eyes were open. He said, You say that, me too. I was lame, now I can walk. Another one said, They rejected me in the hospital, now I am healed. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you have come from, you are going to take great joy back home. Yeah. Healing back home. Yeah. Salvation back home. Yeah. Total freedom back home. Yeah. All the chains snapped and all the chains broke in you are going to go back home with songs of joy and songs of miracle in Jesus name power will come in your life when it says confession the manifestation of confession what does that mean I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 he that covereth a sin shall not prosper the one that covers a sin that one is a pretender that one is a hypocrite that one is saying i am good but his conscience knows that he is bad the one that says i am righteous and everybody in the city knows is unrighteous the one that says i'm honest everybody knows is a liar is a sin they are the people that cover their sin and they accuse god of not seeing and because of that they go empty and they, but look at this whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy 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 unto you unto him unto her unto them the way to have the mercy of salvation and the mercy, compassion in healing, and the mercy of a miracle, whatever the challenge may be, is to come and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, I want salvation. Salvation will come immediately. I am sick, I want healing. Uh, healing will come immediately. I am oppressed, I want deliverance. Deliverance will come immediately. It will come. I said it will come. Where is it coming? Salvation. Where? Salvation. Where? Where would it come? It will come to you there. I rejoice with you. As you confess with your mouth that you are a sinner, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior, you will be saved you'll be healed yeah. you'll be delivered yeah. and everyone 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 will go back home with songs and testimony of joy in your heart in your mouth in your life in jesus name yeah. heaven is ready are you ready yeah. jesus is ready for you to save are you ready yeah. i said are you ready and the Lord is ready to break every yoke in your life and to heal every yoke in your life and to heal every sickness in your body. Are you ready? Eggs bowed and eyes closed. Eggs bowed and eyes closed. What a day! A day of joy for you. A day of salvation for you. A day of total freedom for you. He wants to forgive you. And he wants to set you free. He wants to write your name among those who are saved. He wants to write your name in the book of life. And you have heard the message. You have heard about the miracle. You have heard about the manifestation. 
It's happened to other people. It's now to happen unto you. Amen. Amen. As but a nice close, that salvation is near right now. The Savior is near right now. You want that salvation? You want forgiveness? You want freedom? You want Him to let you loose so that all the chains of sin that bound you in the past, everything will be cancelled now. Wherever you are, and you're willing to confess, I'm a sinner. I want the Savior, and I want Him to forgive me. I want Him to set me free. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Amen. Just raise up your hand. Wonderful. God bless you. Raise up your hand anywhere you are. You don't have the assurance of total freedom. You're still sinning. Still doing evil. Still drinking. Still smoking. Still lying. Still misbehaving. And doing things contrary to the word of God. And your conscience is telling you. You are the guilty man. You are the guilty woman. But the Lord wants to set you free. And forgive you wherever you are. Raise up that hand. Thank you. God bless you. The Lord is watching for you. And the Lord is saying. If you will confess right now. And turn away from those evil things you have done. He says it will forgive you. How could you miss that? If you are raising up your hand. Please stand up wherever you are stand up wherever you are you cannot save yourself church cannot save you religion cannot save you um, a good Samaritan that cannot save you Christ is the only savior and Christ Jesus has the power to forgive he has the power to forgive. He wants to forgive you now. And he wants to set you free. And take the burden and the pressure and the power of sin out of your life. He that covereth a sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. As we are standing up, tell the Lord there. Lord, I thank you. You love me. It's not your will that I shall perish. You have commanded all men everywhere to repent. And you have commanded me in particular to repent. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I surrender unto you. Lord, I will not go back to all the vomit, the sin of the past anymore. Lord, I come. I believe that Christ, the only begotten Son of God, died for me on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord. I accept the forgiveness. I accept your mercy. I accept your salvation. I accept eternal life i accept the new life in christ and i confess i am saved i confess i am saved i confess i am saved the lord has answered your prayer Keep on standing. I pray with you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you because you are the one that called the sinner out of sin. And you called everyone to repent. They have turned away from their sin. And they have come in genuine repentance. Believing that Jesus died for them on the cross of Calvary and rose again for their justification and salvation. Lord, manifest that joy of salvation in their hearts right now. Wash away all their sins. 
Give them assurance. You have answered their prayers. They are no more children of Satan. They are now children of God. Confirm it, O Lord. And let everyone go back home with great joy. The joy of salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our counselors are nearby there. They'll give you slips to fill. Want to have record that this day you gave your life to Christ. You are forgiven. You are set free. We we'll call on our state pastor to help us now with uh, the counseling period. Keep on standing. I'm coming back to pray for those who have any sickness, any disease in their body. Tonight will be the night of your miracle. Let our counselors move up fast. Take our the statistics, the name, the telephone number, as well as email address, write in capital letters. Capital letters, write clearly. All of us who are far away, far away there, please, let's go to them, our counselors. And those of us who are watching online, either by television, or the Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, radio stations, and you give your life to Jesus Christ today, send your name, your phone number, and your address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number on the screen. If you check your screen, you find the number there. But if you are listening by radio, this is the number plus two three four nine one five triple four nine two six three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three that's the whatsapp number or the sms address that you can use right now you give your name your phone number and your address please our counselors let's make sure we take this statistics down properly so that it's easy for us to read Yoruba audience please also follow all we are saying let our counselors speak Yoruba to them so they can understand Let's move fast and let nobody go home. Because the signs and wonders, the reign of miracles, and the manifestation of the power of God is about to come now. The rain is about to fall. And everybody will be touched by the rain. Don't rush home, don't go home. The buses are there waiting for you, so there's no reason to run to catch the bus. Stay where you are. Get all the prayers. Have faith. And wait until the testimonies are over. Until you have given your own testimony. Then you can go home. I will have a testimony. Uh, what about you? I will have a testimony. Now say it this way. I will have a testimony. Our Father in heaven will confirm that in Jesus name. Our counselors please drop the slips. 
in the baskets that the supervisors are taking around. For those of us far away there, you can hand over the slips to the leader. Let's move fast. And those of us online, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, check the number on the screen and send to that number your name, your phone number, and your address. And don't forget, tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, our Father in the Lord is inviting you to a lunch hour with Jesus. Lunch hour with Jesus, very close by here at the theological seminary there at the back there. Three o'clock in the afternoon, all the converts tonight, special lunch hour for you. That will provide the eye seen on the cake of what you are receiving tonight. And then from that lunch hour, we move to the crusade and join the happy people tomorrow. If we are finished, can our supervisors wave to us? And if no one has taken your own sleep, can you wave your sleep up? No one has taken your sleep. L wave it up. Please, ushers, all counselors, look at anyone who might be waving up any sleep and collect. and saying to the supervisors for collation. Looks like we are finished. Now, close your eyes and stand up on your feet as our Father and the Lord comes now as we get the manifestation of the miracles we desire. Praise the Lord. Manifestation. Where is it coming? Tonight is coming to you. Blind eyes will open. Deaf ears will hear. Dumb tongues will speak out. You've been paralyzed. You are lame, impotent. When you hear the final amen, don't wait for any other thing. Get up. The power of God will make your work. Yeah. Broken bones will be joined together. Yeah. Kidney problem will come alive. Yeah. And all your lungs, anything that is, uh, you know, not all right there, a creative miracle will take place in Jesus' name. Insanity will vanish away. You are the object and target of miracle tonight. Where am I? Object of miracle. Target of miracle. Healing coming to you tonight. Lay your hand where you have the problem and then raise up the other hand. Manifestation tonight. Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the message, for the miracle, for the manifestation, and for the very fact that there's going to be joy, great joy, all over this place tonight and everywhere, radio, television, anywhere, everywhere tonight, in Jesus' name. I send forth your power. I send forth the healing. I send forth the deliverance. 
manifest your miracle working power in every life right now in Jesus name blind eyes begin to open now deaf ears begin to hear right now dumb tongues be loose in Jesus name Lord, I pray that swelling in the tummy, any part of the body, that swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Lameness, paralysis, arthritis, come out in Jesus' name. Broken bowls, come together. Broken bowls, come together. I command those broken bowls, be joined together in Jesus' name. Arthritis, vanish away that insanity and that spirit of madness i command you come out in jesus name lord everywhere now miracle everywhere miracle everywhere manifestation touch everyone turn every life around and put miracle on everyone confirmation Confirmation. Confirmation. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Check up now. It's there. Blind eyes. Just open your eyes. Now you can see. You are deaf. You are dumb. Now you can hear. And those who are lame, get up. Power has come upon you manifestation on everyone in Jesus name.